Sound Check for Guitar. going to just do a little pre-show pre-show here just to uh, make sure everything's working we have a very technical setup here this evening Here we go. Oh, we're not at night. Still not at half past yet. <laughs> Is it? Right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Songs and Stories, a little soiree from the lounge, open plan kitchen, dining room area that is the home of my good wife and I. My good wife is sitting behind us. Say hello. Hello. She is doing the technical stuff and uh, drinking a volume of red wine. I think I need a drink. So we're trying a few new things today. The first of which is a separate camera and audio setup. That should be almost enough, which should give us better sound and picture than last week's, uh, but obviously brings with it a few technical glitches and de details, hopefully no glitches. And then the second thing is the introduction of um, a backing track, which I shall tell you about when we get to it, and uh, a performance on the magnificent Fender Stratocaster. That will be the finale of this evening. Right. Thank you all very much for your contributions. I hope that you're all very well. Uh, thank you very much for just being here and being part of this. I hope that wherever you are in the world, this tumultuous time is not taking its toll too much on you, and if it is, I hope that this will do something to alleviate that. Right, my first song, I didn't write. This was written by Paul Simon, James Richard, thank you for giving me the idea. And it's one from his album Graceland, and I remember it because my mother bought this tape, a cassette tape, way back in, oh, what when did it come out, 1987 or so I think it was, and we listened to it over and over and over again. It was the only music tape she had in her car, apart from a dodgy recording of the Brandenburg Concertos. And we listened to this just forever. And I knew all the words backwards, and we knew which songs, we knew how fast and how long to push the fast forward button when we wanted to skip a certain song. And my mother loved it very much as well. And so it was that Paul Simon came out here as the very first international act post-isolation. And that was in 1990, I think it was. So it was just as the cultural boycott was being lifted in South Africa. And my mother and I and a whole lot of other friends went off to Ellis Park, as it was then, which is a big rugby stadium in South Africa. And we watched Paul Simon live. And the most special part of that concert was the arrival back from exile of Miriam Makeba. And she sang under African skies with Paul Simon that evening. That's not what I'm going to sing you tonight. Tonight we're going to have a rendition of The Boy in the Bubble. <laughs> Please enjoy. Here we go. Oh, and you're welcome to ask any questions if you'd like to. You're also welcome to comment on the sound. If it's not working for you, we'll do what we can from this end. This is a work in progress. <laughs> Sun was beating on the soldiers by the side of the road. There was a bright light, a shatter in a shop windows, the bomb in the baby carriage was wired to the radio. These are the days of miracle and wonder, 
This is a long distance call The way the camera follows us in slow-mo The way we look to a song, oh yeah The way we look to a distant constellation Is dying in a corner of the sky These are the days of miracle and wonder So don't cry, baby, don't cry, don't cry was a dry wind and it swept across the desert and it curled into the circle of the earth and the dead sand the falling of the children the mothers and the fathers and the automatic earth these are the days of miracle and wonder this is a long distance call the way the camera follows us in slow-mo the way we look to a song oh yeah the way we look to a distant constellation is dying in a corner of the sky. These are the days of miracle and wonder, so don't cry, baby, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Jump starts, everybody jump starts. Every generation throws a hero off the pop charts. Medicine is magic, magic is art. Because the boy in the bubble and the baby with a baboon heart. I believe these are the days of lasers in the jungle. Lasers in the jungle somewhere. Staccato signals of constant information. A loose affiliation of millionaires and billionaires and baby. These are the days of marriage. This is a long distance call The way the camera follows us in slow-mo The way we look to a song, oh yeah The way we look to a distant constellation is dying in a corner of the sky These are the days of miracle and wonder So don't cry, baby, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry So that was the boy in the bubble. Can I ask you a question? Yes, you may do a question while I sort Laura myself Moore out. Ah, Laura Moore. No, we don't have a recording studio. The home of uh, Kirsten and I, of my of Kirsten and I, the home of Kirsten and I, is a two-bedroomed home, and she has very kindly donated the second bedroom into, or made it my sort of man cave. Man cave. Yes, man cave, thank you. And that is doubling as a recording studio. Unfortunately, uh, it's not sort of soundproof, and we live in a complex, which means that we have to be relatively careful about how noisy we are. And so, no, no studio. I'd love to have a studio. Maybe one day when I'm big, I will have a studio. Yes? Hopefully it'll be as nice as the one that my dear wife created for me here. Right, the next song is an original song. We're going to stick with the tradition uh, that began last week of one cover, one original. Cheers, everyone. This song is called The Fall, and I wrote this song when I was living at Londolozi, which is obviously a very nice place to live. Very fortunate to have lived there for a number of years. And... I remember I was just sitting fiddling on my guitar one day and I looked up at my bookshelf and I thought, why don't I just try and make a song out of uh, the sleeves of the books or the titles of the books on my bookshelf. And so that's what I did. And at the time, I was, um, how old was I? I was probably around 26 years old or so, so still in my 20s, which they say is your stupidest decade. It certainly was for me. And I was doing my best to try and find answers in the world. And I had all sorts of books on conspiracy theories and 
books on different religions and books on basically people trying to understand the human condition. And if I look through it now, I'm not sure I can actually remember what all of them are, but I was reading things about the Masons and Graham Hancock's stuff about um, ancient civilizations, of which there is very little proof whatsoever, and then one about a plague, which of course is very um, appropriate for this time of our lives, and that's what it's about. I, I don't know that it... For me, it's a very calming song. It's a song that connects me in some way to something because I guess that's why it was written. It was written uh, in the search for a connection with something deeper than ourselves. And for me, very much now, uh, when I sing this, especially when I'm in nature, uh, it's a comforting song. So this is The Fall. <laughs> Said the tired soul of a king who's passed To the keeper of the tale that lasts I don't believe that you're listening Said the keeper to the weary soul To the signs in the sky you must hold The secrets of the builder now are leaking mm -hmm. Where should I be running? Find the breaking dawn light Said the keeper to the soul You must find the code where Genesis speaks In verses old time's fingers left her markings In the field And all along the desert sands Old Hiram stretched his old hand In the wind mystery and sanity of alchemy a talisman must be then I fell on my back the fire's wind clears the job and wore a spell I hid my face until the air grew still the sky ran Sun broke through and carried me away. Yes, it carried me away. Said the keeper to the soul, You can see my mind, the quantum leap speak for all time, but I'm not sure you're really listening. Said the soul to the keeper, you can see I'm tired, so why do you talk in your riddles and rhymes? My view is slowly darkening. Where should I be running? This plague is slowly strangling. In the quiet of a valley, an old black king watched his warriors dance and sing, and they can see the old ways of fleeing and all along the desert sands old Hiram stretched his old hand and in the wind the mystery and sanity of alchemy a talisman must be then I fell on my back the fire's wind Clear the job and hold a spell I hid my face until the air ran clear The siren ran clear The sun broke through and carried me away Yes, it carried me away Yes, it carried
on my back the fire's wind Clear the job and hold the spell I hid my face until the air grew still The sky ran clear And carried me away As it carried Thank you very much, Fantastic. everybody. It's one of my favorites, too. You like that one? I love that one. Deluxe. Okay, can I give you some, some questions? Mm. Okay, so firstly, Peter wants to know what guitar you are using. Ah, Peter, this is a Larave LV01, I think it is. No, oh, LV03. It's a Canadian guitar, and it's actually a... It's got a bit of a story in so much as... I name all my guitars, and this one is called Larry. M most people, I keep looking at the microphone instead of the camera. Most people name their guitars after women or ladies' names. I've always named, given mine, male names. Well, maybe if we get another guitar, I'll uh, call it Kirsten. This one's called Larry because he's a Larave. That's not particularly um, original, but uh, that's what he's called. And he was brought to South Africa by... A wonderful, excuse me bumping that, old school artisan by the name of Andy McGibbon. And unfortunately Andy um, left us bodily last year sometime. And he was a wonderful kind of old school artisan that you don't find anymore. You know, normally now you go into a big music shop and it's like a factory, it's like a warehouse. And he used to... He used to look after all the guitars himself. He wouldn't let you buy a guitar off the shelf and just take it out. He'd, he'd, you'd have to buy it from him, and he'd spend two weeks fiddling with it and setting it up and that sort of thing. So this was my first experience of a really nice guitar, and this wonderful artisan made that experience just so incredibly special for me. Anyway, that's what it, what it is. And it was bought for me by Londolozzi when I was living there, and I was playing every night in the Bomas, and they bought me this magnificent guitar and I'm eternally grateful to Londolozzi. And one more question yes. from Tom. Can you play any other instruments? Um, no, Tom, I can, I can find my tambourine. way... Hey? You can play the tambourine. I can play the tambourine. I can find my way around a piano, but to say that I could play it would be inaccurate. And I have <laughs> dabbled with learning the bagpipes, but I've yet to get on to the actual real instrument. My uncle is a magnificent bagpiper. And uh, I've always wanted to play and just never kind of found the time. So basically, no, I can sing and I can use the guitar. Okay, the next song, actually, I think it, the words kind of speak for themselves. It's about the ruts, I suppose, that we get stuck in. I don't know this for sure because this is a cover song. It's by Dave Matthews, and it is uh, for Dave Patricius, who whenever he was massively supportive when I lived in Johannesburg as a struggling musician, and he always asked me to play Dave Matthews when he was watching me. So this is for you, Dave Patricius. And it's called Grey Street, and it's, I think, about being in a rut and finding the courage to get out of the rut. And I... I I think it's a beautiful song. I mean, a lot of Dave Matthews' songs, I think you'd struggle to find a meaning in the words unless you knew him. But this one's pretty obvious, and so it's called Grey Street. And this is how I find the courage. Obviously also in the smile of my good wife. Smile. Kiss. <laughs> Oh, look at how she listens She says nothing of what she thinks She just goes stumbling through her memories Staring out onto grey streets And she says, please How did it come to this? I dream myself a thousand times around the world but I can't get out of this place 
Oh, there's an emptiness inside you And you do anything to fill it in And all the colors mix together To grave That breaks her heart Oh, how she wishes it was different Praise to God most every night And though she swears he doesn't listen There's still a hope in her he might She said I pray But I swear it falls on deaf ears Am I supposed to take it on myself To get out of this place Oh there's an empty Inside her, and she'd do anything to fill it in. And though there's red blood bleeding from her now, it feels a cold blue ice in her heart. And all the colors are mixed together to break, and it breaks her heart. Oh, there's a stranger creeping outside the door. Says take what you can from your dreams Make them as real as anything It takes the work out of courage But she says please There's a crazy man creeping outside my door I live on the corner of Grey Street At the other end of the world Her, and she'd do anything to fill it in And though there's red blood bleeding from her now It feels like cold blue ice in her heart She feels like kicking down all the windows And setting fire to this life She could do everything about it Turning colors and all the colors mixed together to break, and it breaks her heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. That was very kind. So that was Grey Street by David Matthews, who was a South African, by the way, and um, found himself in Virginia. I'm not sure when the family left, but it was some time back. Now, yes, 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 Grey Street. Ruth, what's, uh, what has been your biggest influence musically? Oh... M. Ruth, I don't know what my biggest influence musically is. I, I think Dave Matthews was a pretty big one. Um, I don't claim to be anything like skillful as he is, but he has been pretty big. I've modeled some of the stuff that I do on him. But I think like with anybody who plays for a long time, they model themselves on different people. So I'll be doing a uh, Pink Floyd or David Gilmore uh, yeah, cover later. And that's a kind of, he's been very influential. I just really like his music. Johnny Clegg, obviously, we lost him a year ago. And wow, you know, every time I hear his songs and his music and every time I'm feeling frustrated with South Africa, which is a lot, uh, uh, if his songs come on, I somehow see through the murk into the wonder of this country. And so he's been a very big influence. I have a question. Yes. Anushka, my father got me into singing, and my mother, they forced me to be in the choir. And I remember we had a big fight one day, my mother and father and I. I was in bed, and I had decided that I was going to give up singing because I didn't like choir practice, because practices in the choir are not normally a huge amount of fun. 
concerts are great, but the practices are never that wonderful. And my father said to me, and my mother agreed with him, they said, if you give this up, you'll never forgive yourself. Uh, just push through it. It's not that much time. You will never regret it when you get older. You'll look back with such fond memories at your singing career. And that's why I carried on singing. So I just sang in the choir. And I had good times and bad times in the choir, mostly good. We had a wonderful choir at school that did some pretty complicated stuff. And so I learned a lot about music that way. And I'm really glad that I did. I don't think I've got the best voice in the world, but I can sing. And it's, there are so many people, my good wife is a wonderful example of this, who say they can't sing. I hope it's okay, I won't ask her to come and sing. She's terrified I'm going to do that <clears throat> one day. And it's not true, they can sing, it's just that they haven't ever. Uh, and in fact, it's very difficult to find somebody who is entirely tone deaf. It's actually really quite hard to find someone totally tone deaf. So this song is called Cry in the Sun, and it's about uh, women's inhumanity to man, I suppose. And I wrote it, a lot of songs are written when you're in a lot of pain and you're not very happy because, well, that's when emotions are the strongest. And I was just coming out of my stupidest decade when I wrote this song. And so it's quite a passionate and loud song. And I hope that you will enjoy it. It's, um, as with most of the stuff that I've written, and it's not a great deal, but as with most of it, it's always inspired in some way by nature. And then there's an, usually another theme, so in this case, women's inhumanity to man. But there's always the underlying theme of nature and the wonder of nature. And so here it is, Cry in the Sun. Are you ready, my dear? <laughs> changing seasons the leaves are starting to green summer knocks on the air lazy afternoon sad trying to break your spell And the mountains in the shadows Dark against the sky Speak to my needs of you Hungry afternoon Spring sun behind the clouds Crying in the sun She's bleeding out the moon And I'm chasing, I'm chasing in the wind Across the rocky wastelands To the fields of your heart Across the rocky wastelands To the fields of your heart Sit with the guitar Staring at the hills They're moving in the wind Drawing me to other things Things to do alone And the mists where we emerge From the danger of hidden things Bird calls in the fog There's a whistling in the trees Spring sun behind the clouds She's crying in the sun She's bleeding out the moon And I'm chasing, I'm chasing in the wind Across the rocky wastelands To the fields of your heart Across the rocky wastelands To the fields of your heart Across the pockets of the 
space between us all It's crowded either It's fogging up my mind And busted reasons all oh, are starting to unwind And she's crying in the sun She's bleeding out the moon And I'm chasing, I'm chasing in the wind Across the rocky wastelands To the fields of your heart Across the rocky wastelands To the fields of your heart Right, now, uh, a big experiment. Can I give you a question? Yes, you may give me as many as you like. <laughs> Roshni, if I could be in a band full-time touring the world, my lovely wife in front of me, not beside me, but in front, uh, then I would probably do that. I love being in bands. I have been in a few bands. The first band I was in... Um, <laughs> had the following name. Kirsten, will you type this in the chat? Yes, yes. The name was S-I-D-H-E. D-H-E. Yes, S-I-D-H-A. Well, exactly. And I mean, how do you pronounce that even? And uh, maybe one of these evenings I will sing you a song from the band called the She, is how you say it. And they are Spirits of the Air in Ireland and Scotland know really why we called our band that. Um, it wasn't a massively successful band. I think we wrote some good songs, but I think you're on a hiding to nothing if no one can pronounce your name. Um, yes. James Richard yes. or Shark, which song would you written do you think you're most proud of? Oh, James Richard, that's a good one. I think that one, I think that that song that I've just played now is the thing that I am most proud of. Um, yeah, I think it works quite nicely. I think it does. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, now we're going to swap guitars. If there are any other questions, I can answer them at the same time. Um, Zoe, are you classically trained? Zoe? Yes, Zoe, I am classically trained. I was very fortunate uh, to do music as a subject at school, which was great. I enjoyed that very much. Oops. And, yeah, I mean, that, that was really a very special time to be able to do that at school rather than something else. And I was really, I think, quite nicely taught by um, a chap called Ben Oersthuizen, who did, some, did our theory, and then a classical guitarist in South Africa. Right. Now... Do you like to know how many guitars do you have and which is the most precious? Who? Kathmandu. I've got five guitars. How's that? It's quite loud. Five guitars, Kathmandu. Most precious. Um, I don't know. I, I think probably this one and then the classical guitar my parents got me. It's just a bit of a buzz I'm going to try and fix. Fender Stratocaster buzz, but I'm not sure we're going to. It sounds it. good, but there's a bit of feedback in the guitar. Yes, no, that's called an echo. Okay, now we've got a backing track for this. The song, by the way, before I start playing it, is Comfortably Numb. And what I did with this, and I've wanted to do it for ages, and finally, during COVID and unemployment, I've had the time to do it is write an orchestral arrangement. So there's no band behind us, but there's a very large orchestra, very large digital orchestra that is going to accompany us. Uh, I hope it's all going to work. I think it's all going to work. Oh, I turned down the wrong one. It's definitely not going to work if it's like that. Uh, right, so shall we see what happens?
Here we go. Comfortably numb. It's, oh, I'll quickly tell you about it. It's, was written, the words are written by Roger Waters. A lot of the guitaring is done by David Gilmore. And apparently, Roger Waters was in some state of discomfort one day, just before a concert, and a doctor came up to see him. He had a stomach ache, and he wrote the song afterwards. And what it means is anyone's guess. They were sort of psychedelic band, so perhaps there was some LSD involved. I don't know. There is no LSD involved here. A lot of people enjoy this song. Well, I hope I don't ruin it for you. Yes, thank you, my dear. Right, here we go. Hello, is there anybody in there? Just nod if you can hear me. Is there any? Come on now I hear you feeling down Well I can ease your pain Get you on your feet again Relax I need some information fast Just the basic facts Can you show me there is no pain you are receding A distant ship smoke on the horizon You're only coming through in waves Your lips move but I can't hear what you say When I was a child, I had a fever My hands felt like two balloons Now I've got that feeling once again I can't explain, you would not understand This is not how I am I have become comfortably There'll be no more ah, But you may feel a little sick Can you stand up? I do believe it's working Good That will keep you going through the show Come on, it's time to go There is no pain The distant ship smoke on the horizon You're on the calm and screwing way Your lips move, but I can't hear what you're saying When I was a child, I caught the fleeting glimpse Out of the corner of my eye I turned to look but it was gone I cannot put my finger on it now The child is grown, the dream is gone And I 
there it is. I've got an absolutely no idea what it sounded like at the end. It sounded amazing. But it made a nice big noise in my ears. So. Except Grumpy Old Man said more cowbell. More cowbell. Thank you, Grumpy Old Man. I will have to get myself a cowbell, or perhaps I shall get my wife a cowbell. Yes. Will you play the cowbell? Yes, I'll play there that. So if that sounded all right, we might do a few more of those. Uh, not right now, but uh, in due course. Mm -hmm. So, that's it, everyone. Thank you. Yes? No, it's not it. Because everyone oh. was saying encore. Right. Hello, Sunshine said she'd like to hear the story about Paxton, but maybe we do encore dedicated to Taxon. Yes, we can definitely do that. Taxon, for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty sure all of you know, um, was a guide at Juma Game Reserve. For a very long time and he retired as covid started and he retired because basically there was no work and he was nearing retirement age so he took slightly early retirement and he unfortunately died about a week ago now less than a week ago no one really knows why uh, it's very very sad he was a wonderful hilariously humorous man um, I remember he, he bought my car from me, um, and which was wonderful because no one else would buy it. He bought it from me. And he took me, we went off to get the ownership changed. Now, in theory, you're supposed to have the ownership changed in a certain way. And in the rural areas of South Africa, obviously, things are not done the way they are always meant to be done because it's impossible to get anything done in the rural areas of South Africa. And I meant, remember going and sitting in the traffic department of Lubukani with Taxon and, and falling about the place laughing as he commented on the people coming in and then spoke to the guy behind the counter. And we spent a lovely day together. And I'm, I'm really saddened by his passing, I must say. Anyway, uh, we'll dedicate this song to him. Uh, this song I sing quite frequently, and I suppose it's about the end of a work week, but uh, in many respects it could be about the end of the uh, end of the run that is life and the movement into whatever else comes afterwards. And it's called Was a Friday, and it was written by Johnny Clegg, obviously, and he. He wrote it one day, he didn't sing it very often actually in, the, in his latter years, but he wrote this many, many years back on the chicken farm. He was doing some vacation work on a chicken farm in a place called Knopis Lachter, which is just north of Johannesburg, it doesn't exist anymore. And he was standing with the workers one Monday morning and they were all hungover and miserable and generally dissatisfied with life as uh, you would have been in those days, especially as a black man in South Africa and the old farmer came out with this ream of stuff that they all had to do and one of the old workers clapped his hand to his forehead and said oh was a Friday which means come Friday come quickly and the words go where Baba unzima gulum shaba where oh father life is tough on this earth where Baba lom seben zupogile the work is breaking us where the money is just not coming in. I wish that this work would just end. This week would just end. Was a Friday, was a my darling, was a which means come Friday, come my darling. Was a Friday, my sweetie. You can figure that out yourself. when this day is conquering us. <laughs> Friday, 
this uh, please click subscribe and like it does uh, help us in various ways so if you could do that and if you really enjoyed it you could do us an enormous favor by sharing the link with uh, all of your friends family homeless people you might see on the street enemies even anyone you know put flyers up around your town uh, put them up in public conveniences wherever you think that somebody might see the link that would be wonderful Thank you so much, and we will see you uh, next week. Well, we won't. I will be back in the bush, and my dear wife will be here on her own. But I'll be back at Wild Earth. But she'll be back at Wild Earth. And I will be on my own in the bush, and so I'll try and work this out myself. It's going to be tricky. Thank you very much for joining us, and goodbye. Should I walk off now? Yeah.